Next step, I'm going to rebuild this chair seat with a damaged wire tied spring unit. I'll start by blowing out the dust and washing up this spring unit. My original plan was to reweave this entire unit, but it appears that these side-to-side -side strands are fine, so I'm just going to replace these front to back. I'll keep these pieces matched up as I pull them out. I'll cut off 22 inch lengths of this piano wire. This is the highest quality steel wire. I need to start by pulling the coil out of this wire. I'll take this wire bending tool, push backwards on it as I draw the wire through the eye. Alright, that came out pretty good. A person can use a wrench and straighten the wire the same way. I experimented with a hardwood block of wood and drilled a series of holes and set pins to bend around and came up with this means of replicating the bends in this wire. I've got these two pins to stabilize the bending action here, make a bend around a roll pin here, insert this, make the secondary bend, insert this pin and make the final bend. Um, after I'd made the design in the in the uh, hardwood block, the experiment, I transferred it over to another block and used Lexan to prevent these holes from wearing out.
I'll come over five inches and mark out for my next bend. I'll slip the wire into the pins, line it up. And this series of holes keeps the uh, spacing accurate. I'll line up this break and measure out five and three quarters for the next bend. For these last folds on the end, I'll switch over to a different bending jig. I'll keep this fold flat. And I'll be wrapping this around 9 gauge steel wire. All right, I'll trim these ends and these are ready to go. I'll bend these original retainer wires back in shape and reuse them. There was little or no wear on these outside wires, so I decided not to replace those. I'll thread these underneath and get them in place. All right, with all the wires in place, this is ready for a coat of paint. I'll lay out 18 inches off center here for the back curve. We'll get this evened up on the template. I'll draw in this arc, allowing a seam allowance. And I'll book this book match this over to the other side. I didn't like the way the original nails had crawled out, so I'm going to replace them with screws. I'll staple this burlap across the front, keeping the weave straight. I'll snug it up over the back.
I'll start with one layer of cotton stitched into place. I made this pick to comb out and fluff up the toe fiber. I'll lay in the toe fibers about an inch thick, at least an inch thick. Enough so when they're lightly compressed you don't feel the low spots in the spring. Using the regulator helps level out the surface. I'll drop over another layer of cotton and feather away the excess. I've drawn out a paper template one inch over the size and profile of the spring edge wire. There's an allowance for the padding materials, the cotton and toe, and a half inch allowance for the cover cloth. With a half inch seam allowance per side, I'll lay out this back panel at 18 inches. I've got the seams marked out for my back panel. I like to work with the bold stripe pattern off center. I like the balance much better. I like to pull up a small pleat on these corners. The cover cloth will pull down approximately four inches, so I need to step the width down on my top, adding a half inch seam allowance to each side. I need to step this down to around oh, a short 20 inches. I'll come down five inches from the corner pleat and shorten that up to about 19 and a half. Taper this off this direction. Dropping down six and a half inches from the corner pleat should uh, allow plenty to drop down over the front. I'll bias cut my cording centered on the lighter blue patches. I'll match up this pattern and squeeze 
square off this end. I'll turn it sideways right here. When I sew these together it should match up evenly spaced. I'll lay back the flaps of this seam and roll it over and it should pretty much disappear. I'll match up the pattern on my seat panel, come up for my one inch seam allowance, and I'll lay out the 18 inch back panel. Looks like I can do it just like this. I've got the seat panel matched up to the fabric. Because of the tapers and the curves in these, they'll never match up perfectly when they're sewn together. I'll come in at about center point on this and go up for my one inch seam allowance and I'll square it up from there. Come down my six and a half inches. I'll square this off at the rear corner. The spring unit extends a little bit over the front of the seat frame, so I need to taper this side panel down with the seam allowances. It looks like 17 inches. As it turns out, it's 18 inches from my back cut to the front part of where I take up the pleat. So I'm going to drop this down to 17 at the very bottom. Taper it back about an inch. I'll book match this panel for the other side. Because this fabric unravels and frays, I've switched down to a smaller stitch size. I'll start by sewing in these pleats. I'll center these two diamonds as I sew the cording in place. Starting the sewing about where the fabric panels pull underneath the frame, leaving that open makes it much easier to gather in the end. I'll match up this stripe and fit it around the corner and sew it into place. Dropped over a layer of slippies. Let's see if it's going to fit. I'll 
I'll start lining up these seams with the corners of the frame. Just do some temporary stapling on them. I'll rub this all into place to get the cording straight. Start pulling down the profile at four inches. I've worked with the padding materials and the corded seam all straight in line with the wire spring edge. With the corners pulled down at four inches, I'll straighten out the front profile. I remove these first staples here and finish out the back corners. All right, that's our wrap on this project.